can you share a bit about your mental health journey with the listeners tonight? ADHD, which uh, impacts my life in a huge way. Um, and then also like being a survivor of various traumas in my life, um, which I think is also um, directly con connected to ADHD. Being a trans person who deals with um, gender dysphoria, which impacts my mental health and like navigating a medical system that is not a super welcoming place <laughs> uh, yet. Not really knowing how to enter a trail that hasn't really been paved for me yet. Not every trans person wants to medically uh, transition, but that is on, in the cards for me. Um, that's on the agenda. It's been on the agenda for years. When I found the language to figure out I was non-binary, I that was 2015. And then 2016 was when I started to pursue it on the island. There had already been um, trans advocacy happening through a person named Asha Arsenal, who had brought the idea of even like making gender affirming procedures accessible on PEI but the province didn't really know what to do. And top surgery, which is a chest masculinization procedure, was actually just a double mastectomy. That was their definition of it on PEI, which is not the same thing, right? Um, so there were a lot of uh, gaps and hoops that I had to jump through when I started to um, pursue this, pursue this like thing that I need to live my life comfortably. I actually started um, a crowdfunding campaign to um, raise money for top surgery off island because uh, I wanted it done uh, in a clinic in Ontario. The campaign started off going really well and then I realized that I was reaching a lot of people and that I wanted to use the platform of that campaign to put pressure on the government. I started just getting people to write letters and people just started writing letters. And there were other people like the, the transgender network on PEI, which is like a combination of trans folks, the fiercest allies I've ever seen in my life. Like, it was like a lot of stuff was kind of happening at once to develop an actual policy and protocol to access trans healthcare on PEI it got a response and, and then I was like called to go to the legislature and watch this uh, announcement, which was good, but it's also, it still needs work, but there is a policy now and people can access um, the procedures that they need off island when uh, they aren't available online. Yeah. Sorry, that was a, I feel like I just said a lot of things. That's like the, <laughs> That's that was game. amazing. No, I, I never knew that about you. That's amazing. Um, what a great story. Definitely, there's still more work to do for our province, but you've done a lot of work yourself. So that's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, with that, I'm super excited for you to play your first song tonight. Um, what's it going to be? Oh, uh, Cost of Living. <laughs> cost of Living is going to be the song. Okay. okay. I had it on repeat today preparing for this, but <laughs> that's nice. 
kind of on the topic of your music, you and I chatted a lot about the music industry and what it means to you and how it relates back to mental health. Um, yes. And I thought that your like your insights on that were super interesting. I can't say I've ever actually spoken with a musician on mental health before, but I found our conversation really eye opening. The kind of Venn diagram of music and mental health is where shit hit the fan for me because I was exhausted. I was touring constantly and I was completely destabilized all the time because the music industry is like, I've said this before, but it's, 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 a, it's like, it's an industry that not only enables destructive and unhealthy behavior, but it completely encourages it in musicians. There's a bunch of pressure with unrealistic deadlines and all this stuff like before yeah i think before like 2017 i i really like i was just done and that was kind of where i realized like oh i have to be a lot more strategic about how i'm spending my energy i can't say yes to everything it's tough because it's a balancing act because you're you're trying to hustle and get your name out and like while i was touring constantly and like breaking my body and my spirit I got a lot of like really awesome fans and I met a lot of cool people and I got a lot of really great opportunities, but like at what cost, you know, I, I like kind of stopped touring for a bit. And then I, I actually met my manager and label and I was like, this is an opportunity to be healthier in my life. <laughs> I'm really just trying to be a lot more uh, intentional, I guess with um, how I create my music and how I put myself out there. Also having like a band and stuff, like you have to think of these other people that you've hired now, like creating a safe and healthy workspace for these people. Like, cause it's just that, it's a workspace. That's awesome. I love the word intentional. No, that's that was great. <laughs> I love how you used the word intentional for that. I also loved how you brought up the hustle too. I find in a lot of spaces that I'm involved in, um, for example, I work a lot with entrepreneurs and then I'm also a student. And I find in both of those areas that yeah. hustle culture is definitely really prevalent. In your industry, you're always in the spotlight too. And so it's um it's much more important to like break those things down. The privilege we both have right now being two white people. Um, and all the intense revolutions that are going on in the world right now um, in yeah. Black Lives Matter movements and marches. And we just really recognize the fact that we both have platforms, whether it be as an artist or as an advocate, and how we can use those for good. Um, and you had a lot of great insights on how you've been using yours for good and how we can continue to advocate for the people who need us right now. So that's something you wanted to chat a bit more about. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that it's really important like I don't think that you can talk about mental health without talking about what is going on in the world right now it's a time of reckoning for white folks to um actually dismantle their inner white supremacy and uh, that they may or may not be aware of so I mean I guess it starts there it starts by like self-education I'm also a huge fan of like when in doubt give your money to black people <laughs> in like black organizations it's like a really good starting point i give what i can yeah so it's like i think it's just like self-education and also like interrogating your whiteness with other white folks and like not putting that on like black people or like like poc communities in general like it's yeah you can't expect people to show up for you if you're not showing up for them. And yeah, so many important ways that we can be helping folks too, whether it be monetary donations or just educating ourselves and dismantling white supremacy and not leaving it on people of color to be educating us. I think those are so many important things that definitely for folks who have a platform like us, we should be recognizing and acting on. Showing up for a revolution can be done in many ways. You don't have to necessarily be on the front lines of a, of a, of a protest. Like you can be giving your money, like map your resources. Can you drive? Do you have a car? Do you like, can you buy people groceries? Can you like, like what can you do to help map your resources and find energy and put it in places that where you would be most service. And I think that that is also a huge part of it.